Welcome back folks to another Ranky Mall video and today we're going to take on King Diamond's discography and this will be the King Diamond band so there won't be any Merciful Fate albums ranked in this video but I have also ranked their full discography so I'll put a link to that video on the end screen of this one if you're curious to see how I rank all of their albums as well and King Diamond is the band that King Diamond started after the split from the aforementioned Merciful Fate and the biggest difference between the bands, besides the different members, were that Merciful Fate dealt more with evil topics, and King Diamond wrote conceptual horror stories. So if you're a King Diamond fan, then smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And now, it's time to rank all King Diamond albums. The worst King Diamond album is in my opinion The Graveyard from 1996. And despite it being one of the band's most commercially successful albums, I think it's their weakest effort. The storyline of the graveyard is about King's character that sees a perverted and immoral mayor committing some horrible crimes. And when King tries to do the right thing and confront the mayor, he manages to get himself locked up at the Black Hill Sanitarium. So we're dealing with another one of those horror concepts here. And the reason why I hold this as King Diamond's weakest effort, it's because of the generic songwriting. Sure, there are some memorable tracks on this album like Heads on the Wall or Black Hill Sanitarium, but the album is a bit lackluster and the production is somewhat dry. The album kinda drags on without reaching the heights of all of their previous records. So for me, The Graveyard is the weakest King Diamond album even if I consider it to be a masterpiece in comparison to what bands like Slayer and Metallica were doing at the time. Next! In 11th place I put House of God from the year 2000, and this was the band's only album featuring bassist Paul David Harbour, known from Chastain, and Glenn Drover, whom joined Megadeth after his stint here with King Diamond. The album's storyline is loosely based on the legend Rennes Le Chateau, which was explained on the eerie intro track Upon the Cross. Upon the Cross he did not die, they tortured him but he survived, smuggled across the open sea to southern France tranquility. There he married Magdalene, he founded another dynasty. A church was built upon a hill to serve all of the gods at will. So this is more of a conspiracy story involving some supernatural stuff than an actual horror concept. And even if I rank this album a bit low on my list, I still think it's a very competent album. The Pact is a cool track, The House of God, and Black Devil are all solid compositions. Next. In 10th place we have Give Me Your Soul Please and it came out in 2007. And the storyline of this album was about two children who had been murdered by their father, and they were waiting in the afterlife. But the girl decided that she wanted to save her brother and tries to contact King Diamond, but she only manages to haunt him. So we're dealing with another one of those classic King Diamond horror stories here. And Give Me Your Soul Please was the follow up to the well received The Puppet Master. And this album has a similar sound to it, a clear and crisp production. The track Never Ending Hill was nominated for a Grammy, but they lost that one to Slayer. And it's also one of the better tracks on the album. I also like Mirror Mirror and the title track. So, next. In ninth place we have Voodoo from 1998. And this album's conceptual story is about... Yeah, you guessed it, Voodoo. And this album takes place in the deep south. And there are some voodoo magic, evil spirits and exorcism. All stirred into one good old horror story. And Voodoo might not be amongst the band's best efforts, but I think it was a step up from the graveyard. So Voodoo is on the bottom half for me, even if I think it's a pretty good album. Loa House and The Exorcist are two cool tracks from this album that are worth checking out. Next! In 8th place we have Abigail 2, The Revenge from 2002, and this was King Diamond's 10th studio album. And plot-wise, this album was a successor to their 1987 album Abigail, that came out some 15 years prior to this. And writing a successor to an already popular album can be tough, 
especially when so much time has passed between the albums. So King Diamond definitely took a risk with this album. Just look at Queensryche's Operation Mindcrime. They did a follow-up called Operation Mindcrime 2, and I don't think anyone liked what they did there, so this was certainly a risk. Anyhow, Abigail 2 delivers surprisingly well. It never reaches the heights of the original Abigail, but I don't think anyone expected it to do that. But I think it made sense to revisit the story again, because Abigail 2 is one of the better King Diamond albums from this side of the millennium. Maybe there aren't any instant hits on this album like they were back in the day, but the overall consistency of this album is very good. Also worth mentioning here is that guitarist Mike Weed and drummer Matt Thompson were new members of the band, and bassist Hal Patino was back in the band for a second stint. Next. In 7th place we have The Spider's Lullaby from 1995, and this was King Diamond's 6th studio album. On Spider's Lullaby, the band had a new lineup. We had King Diamond and Andy Rock, and three new members in Herb Simonson, Chris Estes and Darren Anthony. And these three guys would be in the band for approximately 3 to 5 years. Most of the album are just songs about random creepy things like serial killers, ghosts and curses. But the last four tracks on the album forms a conceptual story. The Spider's Lullaby, Eastman's Cure, Room 17 and To The Morgue. And these songs are about arachnophobia, which is the intense and irrational fear of spiders. The Spider's Lullaby is a great album that you definitely should check out if you haven't. Next. In 6th place we have The Puppet Master from 2003. And this is my favorite King Diamond album from the 90s and beyond. And this is also my favorite Christmas album of all time. <laughs> Because I keep spinning this album every Christmas to get in the right mood for the holiday season. And this storyline follows a young couple who go to watch a puppet show in Budapest during Christmas time, back in the 18th century, but they end up being turned into undead puppets by the puppet master and his wife. And this is a real creepy story, and the production here is absolutely flawless. The guitars pack a bit more punch than they did back in the day. And the musicianship here is just exceptional. I love the lead guitar work on this album. Just excellent stuff. And I love this album and I consider it to be one of the better metal albums of this millennium. So next. In fifth place we have GRANDMA! <laughs> or THEM from 1988. And this was the band's third studio album and the first with Hal Patino and Pete Black in the lineup. And Them is the first out of two fictional concept albums about King and his mentally ill grandmother, the second one being Conspiracy. And King descends into madness via his grandmother and the voices in the house of Eamon, known to the listener only as Them. And speaking of King, his voice is very dynamic and theatrical on this album since he was doing different voices on it, instead of just doing the narration. I think that the production here is good, and them feels like the natural step of the band's evolution. They recorded a music video for the song Welcome Home that I recommend that you watch if you haven't. And now it's time for some tea, so next. In fourth place we have The Eye from 1990, and on this album the theme was Christian atrocities, with the persecution of alleged witches. And this album is based on real events, I mean not the necklace stuff, but the actual events with the witch hunts and the abuse. And The Eye is also the only King Diamond album to feature drummer Snowy Shaw, who did a solid job here at replacing Mickey D. It's said that the drums were recorded on drum pads, and I might be completely deaf, because I think the drums here sound so right, I mean I wouldn't be able to tell honestly. The drums might be a bit simplistic though, but the guitar work on this album is close to perfect, and the production is also very good. I just love how this album sounds, and the fact that the witch trials that they sing about were based in reality, instead of fiction, makes the album even more sinister. The Eye is a remarkable album, and it's also somewhat underrated in King's discography. 
And Burn is one of the best songs that the band ever wrote. And uh, Father Picard is also a stunningly great composition. Next. In third place we have Conspiracy from 1989. And this album continues and concludes the horror story that the band started on their previous album, Them. So you get to meet Missy and Grandma one more time. Conspiracy feels more accessible, the production is clean, and the musicianship ain't as intense as on Abigail or Fatal Portrait. And Andy LaRocque and Pete Black deliver some amazing guitar work on this album. I really love the tracks At the Graves, Sleepless Nights, A Visit from the Dead, Eamon Belongs to Them, and the more or less instrumental outro Cremation. Conspiracy is yet another masterpiece from King Diamond's solo band. For about 5 years or so, between 1986 and 1990, the band was completely unstoppable and everything they touched turned to gold. And all of their albums from this period are insanely great. It was just a triumphant run that the band was on. So, next. In second place we have King Diamond's debut album Fatal Portrait from 1986. And this is the closest thing to the sound of those early Merciful Fate records. Maybe because of three fifths of the lineup were old Merciful Fate members. And King Diamond also recruited two Swedes here for his solo project, drummer Mickey D and guitarist Andy LaRock. And Fatal Portrait is one of the few King Diamond albums that aren't a whole concept album. The first four songs on the album and Haunted forms a short story. And this was the introduction to a new era of King Diamond, where the Hail Satan stuff from the early Merciful Fate era was replaced by conceptual horror themes. The Candle delivers a classic creepy introduction to the album, and it's one of the best tracks on Fatal Portrait. And King Diamond's vocals are strong, the solos shred, the drums have a perfect driving rhythm to them, and Timmy Grabber does a rock solid job on the bass. And this might not be the best produced King Diamond album, but still, Fatal Portrait stands out as one of the better metal albums of the 80s. Next. The greatest King Diamond album is in my opinion their second studio album Abigail from 1987. Abigail is like the ultimate concept album, and it was also the band's first full concept album. And the storyline of the album follows a young couple, Miriam Natchez and Jonathan Le Fay, who move into an old mansion that Le Fay inherited. It takes place in the summer of 1845, and upon their arrival, they are warned by seven horsemen not to move into the house, because if they do, 18 will become 9. They do not heed the warning and proceed to move into the mansion. And that was their first mistake. <laughs> and this was, to my knowledge, the first time that a band wrote a horror concept like this, where all the songs contributed to the story. Every note was carefully laid into the fabric of the narrative. The album is melodic, haunting and the musicianship is top tier all over the board. And if we're going to speak of highlights on Abigail, then I would say all. But Arrival, A Mansion in Darkness, The Family Ghost, The Seventh Day of July 1777, and Abigail. But I do think that each and every song on this album contributes not only to the story, but to the overall greatness of this record. I think that Abigail is one of the greatest metal albums of all time. And uh, let's have a look at my full King Diamond ranking now. And this list is of course subjective, but I must say that King Diamond's discography has been one of the hardest to rank for me personally, since I think that most of their albums are good to great. So if you guys would ask me to rank these albums again in a year from now, I would probably rank them slightly different. And now I'm curious to hear your favorite King Diamond albums down below. Are you a Fatal Portrait or Abigail fan, or do you prefer them, Conspiracy or The Eye perhaps? Or any of their more recent albums like House of God or The Puppet Master? Let me know your thoughts, and if you're familiar with all of their albums, feel free to post your full rank down below. And if you like this video, then smash that like button, it really helps the spread of my videos. And subscribe with the bell notifications turned on, so you won't miss out when I post my next videos here to the channel. And you should also check out my King Diamond playlist on Spotify, 
and join my communities on Discord and Facebook. And if you like my videos, then I'd suggest that you consider becoming a Patreon and drop me a few dollars. Or go and grab yourself some cool looking shirts at the Ruthless Metal Store. And don't forget to check out my Merciful Fate album ranking, which you can see on the end screen in just a minute. And let me know your favorite King Diamond albums down in the comment section below. And don't forget to call your grandma from time to time. And that's it folks, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye.